on that cold and windy Friday afternoon. It had felt like it had been years since he had eaten and drank anything. The Last Supper seemed so far away. That time with his disciples and apostles seemed like it had happened years ago. Any meals with his Blessed Mother and with the other people following him were so distant from that moment. He had lost so much blood, lost so much energy carrying that heavy cross, and now he was on it, crucified. The moment that he had both been looking for and dreading was now here, and he was giving the homily of his life. Those words that would change all of history, that would impact our lives in ways that we do not even know. Simple, very brief, and he spoke each word one after another with great intention. This one resonates with us today. We hear it from the cross, but let us hear it in our hearts. Let it penetrate us so that we become aware of our sin and also be freed from it. I thirst. He meant it literally. He physically was starving and thirsting so much blood that he had lost. He also meant it spiritually, his divinity attached to his humanity, a divine being thirsting on an infinite level to a degree that we simply cannot understand. We, on the other hand, struggle to feel this. We are surrounded by food in the modern world and not just in the United States, North and South America, Europe, in Asia, even throughout Africa. Food is everywhere. We have made it so easy to eat. We have mass produced food on an extreme level, not just fast food, which is obviously everywhere and so easy to get our hands on, but also regular food. We've increased our methods of farming, of production. The shelves at the stores are stocked and we have these needs, these ancient desires that tell us, stock up, you're gonna die. You're starving, you need more, because our ancestors lived this way. And so these instincts lead us today, and companies take advantage of it to present to us food that we don't need. We stuff our faces, we fill our bellies. It is so easy to fall into this sin. And this sin becomes a gateway to other sins, to laziness, to lust, to pride, to forgetting other people who have great needs. We only care about our own needs. And yet we can understand why people fall into this sin. We can understand why people simply take in too much. Today we are praying for the souls in purgatory that during their life suffered and gave into the sin of gluttony. We are praying for them. We are making reparation for them. We are atoning for their sins in our body. The most obvious invitation is for us to fast. But maybe you don't have the courage. Maybe you're afraid of what to do. Maybe you just simply have tried and have failed. For you, there is the little way of fasting, an approach that St. Therese herself offers us and helps us to take on. But in fact, it's been a method that so many saints have done. Little sacrifices every single time that we eat. Throughout your day, everyone can do this. Whenever you come to the table, you can drink a little bit less than what you need. You can not add any salt or pepper and simply eat the food as is. You can in fact eat food that you don't find particularly tasty and make that sacrifice. You can eat a little bit less than what you need and offer that as a sacrifice. You can intentionally give others the best portion, the best piece and place yourself last. Or perhaps for the first time, you could intentionally eat healthy and put aside those unhealthy habits that you have made. All these small sacrifices add up and allow us to atone for the sins of those in purgatory, especially the sin of gluttony. Imagine what it's like for the souls in purgatory, for those that committed the sin of gluttony in their life. What are the punishments like there? Imagine that you are there. Put yourself in purgatory. Feel their pain. The fires attack their stomach. The pain is directed towards their mouth gruesome pain on their hands for all the food that was excessive that they grabbed, burning and burning and burning, purifying them, but also satisfying God's justice. We could be there one day, especially us in the modern world, the sin that we so easily commit. We will be guilty of it. Therefore, help those that are there now. Make for yourself friends now in purgatory. Pray for these people, make reparation for them, and when they get to heaven, they will pray for you to overcome the sin now so that you can conquer gluttony 
you can embrace the virtue of temperance and have this victory in your own life. My friends, persevere on this day 18 in this journey of Lent. We are almost halfway there. Pray for these souls in purgatory, make reparation for their sins, and I will see you tomorrow in day 19.